CNN Tonight with Don Lemon, tonight at 10 Eastern. Wells Fargo CEO is heading back to Capitol Hill for another beatdown. He'll be testifying before a House committee. So what are lawmakers going to do to hold him accountable, or is this just going to be another grandstanding session? Joining us now is Republican Congressman Jeb Henserling. He's the chairman of the House Financial Services Committee. Uh, Congressman, I appreciate you uh, joining us this morning. Uh, I don't mean to sound cynical, but there is not a lot of reason to believe anything will change. We hear about bad acts from the banks all the time. Nobody goes to jail. Nobody gets punished. What will be different this time? Well, you're right, and the American people are rightly outraged. I mean, too often it feels like deja vu all over again. You have some institution engaged uh, in illicit behavior. They end up paying some fine that makes a big headline for a regulator, but it's a rounding error in their earnings statement, and yet no individual is held accountable. So we intend to get to the bottom of this, and what are we in the business of doing in Congress? Frankly, making laws. Our committee has passed something called the Financial Choice Act that would increase fines and penalties on wrongdoers for fraudulent and deceptive behavior. And in many cases, we'd increase the fines uh, two and three times as much. Uh, in addition, we would ensure that Wells Fargo and any large bank would never, ever qualify for a taxpayer bailout. That's one of the things that we think encourages this egregious behavior. But the bottom line is millions of Americans just got ripped off by their bank, probably let down by their government, and it's the responsibility of Congress to get to the bottom of it. Uh, we do understand that some people are calling for an SEC investigation. What's your take on whether or not this may be a criminal matter or some type of civil fraud or something that should be investigated with some type of penalty and litigation? Well, I think very well it, it, well, it does need to be investigated. I mean, potentially there have been violations of the Truth in Lending Act, the Truth in Savings Act, the Electronic Funds Transfer Act, possibly Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, several different securities laws uh, violations. Again, it just, it just it is beyond belief that you could have over the course of five years 5,000 employees dismissed, 2 million fraudulent accounts, and somebody up the food chain, somebody in upper management didn't either direct it, condone it, or turn a blind eye to it, and an individual has to be held accountable. Again, it's not just enough. At the end of the day, it's not a bank that committed this fraud. It was some individual group of individuals, and, and, and the American people demand justice and fairness and accountability under the rule of law. So very well, uh, there could be securities laws violations here that Wells has to answer for. Even the laws that you say that you're designing in committee, it's about money. It's about penalties. They have money. Uh, you know, I'm sure they don't like giving back $41 million in bonuses, but they have money. It's jail that what the punishment for crime is supposed to be. The laws are not designed well enough to send people who commit these kinds of acts to jail. You hear from prosecutors all the time. These cases are really tough. We're trying to fit them into categories. Why don't you design laws that punish this stuff criminally with jail time? Well, it's something that our committee will look at. I'm not necessarily Why look at convinced. It? Why not just do well, it? Well, well, one, because I'm not necessarily convinced of the proposition. I want to know. We have laws on the books now. This is criminal activity. Fraud is fraud. Theft is theft. And so there's a question again, have the regulators let us down? Why haven't they pursued this? Why haven't they prosecuted it? What is it that they need? I'm not convinced we don't have the laws on the books. Chris, it's not always a matter of changing laws that are on the books, although that may be necessary. Quite often, it's a matter of figuring out why weren't they enforced in the first place. And so we've got a lot of questions. For example, why were there examiners embedded by the federal government, embedded in Wells, and yet it took the L.A. Times to break the story? Mm -hmm. Why was it almost 18 months later before the CFPB launched their investigation? So why is it, if we're paying all these federal regulators to do this, we're sleep at the will. I, I, I mean, I don't know the answer to the question yet. Maybe they deserve a pat on the back, but maybe they deserve a swift kick in the pants as well for being asleep at the switch. Fair point. No question. You're right about one thing. Americans are outraged by this and how it seems to continue to come to bear. We'll watch the hearings today with great interest. Congressman, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it.